bottom of the oops I forgot. Yeah, I forgot light up my we got hats, we got glasses. No, Fine. I forgot I, I had my backside. We might oh, have to I do that a little bit. Right. Show your backside. Okay, so we'll just pretend and we'll start all over. Yeah, okay, this is old camp. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about the history of Labor Day. Yes. Which actually isn't as well like this. Most of the things we do got like 40, 50 pages of material Labor Day has half a page. That's not that much. No, it's not that much because Labor is not really that big a deal. Well, see, part of it is most people think of Labor Day as the end of summer and the beginning of school. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't always happen because there's a lot of schools that have already started. Oh, they're all over California schools have started. They can, okay, it's why summer officially ended a, uh, a month ago as far as the movie companies are concerned. You know, maybe that's why they did that. Because yeah. to them it was the end of summer already. I know. I mean, usually you wait at least until Labor Day. Yeah. But well, maybe that's why. Hmm. Okay, but basically throughout the history of Labor Day, which is, a, which is actually an American national holiday, May Day, which is the official Labor Day. Wait, is, May, May Day is... Why is May Day an official... Uh, because that's what the communists deemed. The socialists and communists oh. deemed May Day as the People's Day because it was the labor movement that, that changed the world. You no, know, the labor movement basically screwed everything up. Labor movements in control nowhere in the world anymore, folks. But um, uh, if some I mean, we should, some call it the unofficial end of summer. Its true meaning is to honor the everyday working people. Well, no, it's not really. Basically, as far as labor is concerned, it's only to honor the union worker. It is, it as, is, what do you mean, as far as labor is concerned? Labor, basically, okay, their, their labor is going so far at the moment as banning any Republican from Labor Day events. What? Yeah. If, what, what is that? Yeah. The Republican polit uh, let's see, as I know, the Republican contenders for the presidency of the United States are being banned from Labor Day events. Uh, That's kind of crazy. It, it, well, it's even more crazy because the cities, basically with Democratic mayors, are refusing to pay the bills with union labor, banning um, people because you can't do it, folks. It's a public event and it's paid for by the public. You can't, do okay, it's the same thing. Uh, okay, we've got to try it this way. You realize that at one time in the United States, black people were not allowed to join unions. They were? Mm -hmm. Guess who got black people into unions in our country? Who? Wasn't the Democrats. Oh. Uh, who gave the black people the right to vote? Wasn't the Democrats. Oh. But, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's Labor Day has become to mean um, unions. And that's all it means. So as the unions have, have diminished, they're only the peripheral events are basically are still Well, there. you know, I, I mean, do they still have parades for Labor Day? Uh, well, yeah. They, they, this is like the It's definition. minimal. I mean, a lot of people just think of it, okay, it's a long weekend, and it's there's still, time for a barbecue. It's and barbecuing, it's lots of beer, it's lots of partying, it's a time to go out and have a good time because mm -hmm. it's a holiday. You know, it's the last major holiday until, I think, what, November or something. Mm -hmm. So... But uh, it, it's time to go out and have a good time. And that's, you know, if you go out and have a good time, I'm like, I didn't remember, I've been a union, I've been so many unions in my life. I mean, union, union picnics were always great. I mm. mean, yeah, I mean, you know, go out and play baseball, go out and drink beer, go out and drink lights, lots of food. So, but uh, basically, those people who sweat, built, and maintain the heart of the United States Union, Today, Labor Day is as normal as baseball, apple pie, and fireworks on the 4th of July, but it's not always been so. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. And in 19th century America, I, I think of this as the Industrial Revolution when it was a yeah, blow. That's what, oh. okay, the Samuel Gompers, all those people. No, I will be honest. There was a time in this country's life where labors were got, labor unions were got awful important because without uh -huh. the unions, you would not have the pay scale you have today. Oh, that's absolutely true. Well, you know, they came to the United States during the Industrial Revolution, and a lot of people come to the United States and they think, oh, the land of milk and honey. Oh, that sounds like, right? The, the American dream, well, what they found out was it was the Industrial Revolution. They were working a lot, oh. and there were many long hours. Oh. God, yeah. I mean, my, 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 okay, my my grandfather was a was crown prince in Prussia. You know, my family's been here from the days of the revolution, but they go back and forth. But my grandfather, that stayed in this country, came here uh, and found out that there was the land of milk and honey. He was a milkman for years. You know, we're talking a guy, you know, Prince Wilhelm. 
You know, uh, I hate, they, they, they hate, hey, Prince. You know, but they never call him by his name, it would be Prince. You know, we, and we want two cat. We want two bottles of milk and some cream. And they probably thought it was really funny that the prince was serving them. Milk. Uh, he didn't think it was funny, but he found out that uh, okay, all the other people that came here mostly as soldiers and stuff. He came here as a person. Right. Yeah, he found that was not a bright idea. Did not, there was not as much work in this country at that time as you thought. Well, and see, part of it, they were working really long hours, and some they would say. Third world, you could say third world country conditions. Yeah. I mean, it was dingy, it might not be dark, it could be potentially dangerous. And actually, this is one of the things, this is the history of our country, where we get on other countries because we say they're bad conditions. Yeah. Which, but because we've, we've already experienced we it. We went through it. I mean, I can remember I worked on an episode of Star Trek a long time ago, that was like 50 years ago. But they were talking about, you know, I went to Kirk was talking about one of his diatribes. You have to understand the reason we know what you're doing is wrong is because we did it. Mm -hmm. And that we did it and we learned that what we did was wrong. It sounds like a parent. Yeah, well, <laughs> put it this way. I mean, okay, when I, okay, I'm, actually, everybody knows, I'm really old and not a straight chick. But when I tell her about something, it comes from doing all the wrong things in my life. I've done a lot of wrong things in my life. My grandmother, you no, know, my grandmother told me, well, don't worry what your father says, son, because everything that he's telling you you shouldn't do, he's done, and I can guarantee you, he got in trouble for every one of them. Uh -huh. And then grandmother, I said, grandmother, she said, yes, I had the same lecture from my grandmother when I was your age, so. Oh, well, from the late 1700s to the mid-1800s, working people, they joined together to create unions and trade unions that would bar bargain collectively on their behalf to what to so that they'd have better working conditions they'd yeah. make more money it's just um okay uh working conditions were atrocious at one time mm -hmm. anybody remembers the great garment district fire where <coughs> where hundreds of young girls were killed in the fire because they only had one the the, the water system the fire you know the hoses didn't work there was only one door to get out mm -hmm. and it basically had brought an end it changed the way the garment industry was done because of the garment makers union which basically was an ungodly strong union uh, okay it was so strong it forced the the fight the industry out of the country um, yes so strong unions can have their benefits and they can really be disastrous well which, which you i mean most of the people here you see some of the benefits. And actually, see, part of it was when they originally started, I mean, the, the conditions are really bad. Now, it seems like the unions okay. are often, most most often, fighting for just more money. More money, because uh, by law, they're guaranteed. Okay, but here's what it is, because people like my grandfather and my father, they, you know, they, they fought for things. When my father became a policeman, they, they basically they had really crappy conditions. Yeah, which there was a very good reason when they started. Yeah, and they fought to make things, they fought to have things written into law. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the way it works. is like people are upset today about what you're doing today is going to hurt your children. The people in the original union movement were doing things to help their children. They knew it wasn't going to do them any good, but they would make certain that their kids would never go into a, a slaughterhouse and worry about cutting their hands off. Mm -hmm. They knew they would go into a coal mine and knew there was laws on the books to make certain that these people were treated right. It wasn't, it, it wasn't as much to help them as it was to help their children and their grandchildren. And it worked. Mm -hmm. Totally. I mean, my God, they did. They built something magnificent. But uh, they, uh, they to praise the efforts of everyday people was first suggested in 1880 by Peter J. McGuire, founder of the United Brotherhood of Carpenters. Yeah, and yeah, my, my father actually knew the man, so. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, this way, my father lived in that. My father's from the early part of the 20th century. What did he say about him? My father said, he. my father, I think he, he actually, uh, he even painted the ass to work with. <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah. But see, the problem was is that when Mr. McGuire would cause my father a bit of a problem, my father would then go to my grandmother his mother and my grandmother, his mother would go over to Stella Jebergoon and say, the Bergoons don't think much of the Maguires, and if you continue to give my son problems, you'll find out why the Bergoons do not like the Maguires. <laughs> he said, have you ever seen a Bergoon with a shillelagh in her hand, Mr. Maguire? Oh, it's so, a what? A shillelagh. What's that? Uh, that's basically like a... a big club, folks. <laughs> this is kind of funny that you're... It's 
like your relatives were actually. I actually, okay. Just like I've got one of my relatives have found Alcoholics Anonymous because we drank a lot too. <laughs> so, yeah. But the, the first Labor Day, was, <coughs> right, a holiday was created on Tuesday, yeah. September 5th, 1882, which is still probably, but that was a Tuesday. It was yeah. still like the first Tuesday of the month, probably. Yeah, we probably was celebrated to working on that date. And that remember, was in New York City by yeah. the Knights of Labor. See, my, grand, my grandfather Wilhelm was a member of the Knights of Labor as a milkman. I was? Yeah, well, because he was a version of, he, he, he uh, started out driving horseless carriages, and then eventually, I mean, you know, he started out driving carriages with horses, and then moved to horseless carriages, and so forth. He became a teamster, mm -hmm. which my father also was. So, oh. so basically, what they wanted to do was to celebrate the, well, the, a day for the working man, which actually expanded more through, you know, it's like by 1885, most of the places that had industrial centers. We're already celebrating. Yeah. I think, you know, sometimes they just want another reason to celebrate. Well, right? Especially if you can get a holiday. Here's a good one. Who were, who, you have to understand, in the early, in the latter parts of the 19th century, who would have made up the labor movement? Mm. It would have been... A lot of the, Irish. It would have been the Irish, and it would have been the Germans. Right, because the they Irish came, Irish came over from the potato famine. And the Germans came over because they didn't, they were, there was no work under the Kaiser, right? So they come over here to get jobs. So, um, but, uh, so the Germans, there was, there was the, you know, the mix and the Huns mm. were always at it with one another. I mean, they, okay, it is so much that they'd actually have their own labor, their own labor unions because they didn't want to be associated with one another. Mm. So, it, it actually because my grandmother was Irish. And my father was German. I mean, I got to go to both sets of lit parties, so there's a different set of food in each place, folks. So, uh, Nikki, by uh, uh, what it was, did this holiday exhibit the uh, to the public the strength and esprit de corps of the trade and labor organizations of the community. Labor Day is also a festival of recreation, and amusement of the workers and their families, parades, festivals, barbecues. In a pattern for Labor Day, speeches by prominent men and women are given the emphasis, the holiday, and civic significance to it. But the problem is, is that they have totally forgotten that this is the United United States, which is a melting pot. And basically, by forbidding <coughs> Republicans to attend Labor Day events, which are paid by the I still community, can't believe that. Yeah. That the they are Republicans are hostile to unions. Well, I mean, see, part of it is is they say that's one group of people yeah. and it's a public event, mm -hmm. then they shouldn't use public funds. There's what they're going to start to bill them for next week. Mm -hmm. But here's the trick is, what's the difference between banning a Republican and banning a black man? Nothing. Nothing. Some will say it's racial, right? Okay. But yeah. I mean, but because, okay. but the other one is... Yeah, but it's, it's just, just pure politi it's it's politics. Pure, it's all politics. Because only about 11% of the people in this nation today are members of labor unions, and they're almost all members of government labor unions. Because, as they say, I mean, okay, I can tell you, I was a member of one union of which the union used all the, they, they didn't use the money to buy political power. They built a $14 million headquarters. Um. Every penny in the coffers was spent to buy a new building, beautiful building, they, when they, Labor union went belly up. They sold the building. Mm -hmm. The union collapsed. All of my little funds that were worth it went. Okay, there's supposedly a law that says you 